Oh, hi there, guys. Uh, over the break, I checked on my salsa, and it looks like it's coming together really nicely. Now, remember, this is the salsa that we made with those fresh green bell peppers, the onions, um, a little bit of chipotle peppers and adobo sauce, some black beans, and some fresh corn on the cob. That looks really, really good. It's about the consistency you want it because it's nice and moist. It smells incredibly smoky. So I'm going to just turn the heat down on that to about medium low just so that stays warm while I finish off the rest of our dishes. Now I'm going to check on our pork too because that should have grilled nicely over the break. Um, you'll remember that this is the one that I put that nice smoky rub with cumin and chipotle peppers. And oh yeah, that looks good. Got some nice grill marks on that. Just like that. See those nice grill marks? Now the way to get really nice grill marks is if when you put meat on the grill, if you don't touch it and you kind of just let it sit and do its thing, you get those nice, nice, really dark grill marks that you see always in the commercials on TV for good restaurants. Um, also over the break, I pulled our sweet potatoes out of the oven. Um, you can see I've already peeled one. The great thing about sweet potatoes is when they are baked, the skin kind of separates from the, the meat a little bit, so it just peels right off really easily. Now these are still a little bit hot, so just make sure you watch your fingers. So I'm just going to peel the skin right off. You can see where the sugar has caramelized on those potatoes. They smell amazing. The great thing about sweet potatoes is um, they're so high in fiber and potassium. They have lots of vitamin A and lots of vitamin C too, so it's a really, really great food to eat if you're dieting or you know, if you're trying to, to take care of your health a little bit. Unfortunately, you don't see these on many restaurant menus. It's just such a shame because they're such a versatile food. Anyway, we have them peeled now. Um, what you want to do with these is you just want to take the back of a fork and lightly press the potatoes. They should mash right up. They get really, really soft from cooking in the oven. So you just give those a quick mash, just like that. See how easy that is? You don't need any special tools or anything to make this dish come together. All right, that looks pretty good. Get the other one mashed as well. All right. You'll see that I did this right in the baking dish. Um, this is the dish I'm actually going to use to finish them off in the oven. What we're going to do next is add a little bit of brown sugar and some butter. Just mix it up a little and just stick it right back in the oven so everything melts together. This dish I absolutely love. Um, my friend Joe used to make this dish all the time whenever we'd have friends over for dinner every Sunday. Um, this dish also reminds me of fall. And I hope to encourage people to maybe use sweet potatoes a little more than just at Thanksgiving. All right, so that looks good. Get that all mashed up. Now we just want to add a little bit of butter to this. Butter will melt really, really nicely. Um, and add as little or as much as you want. I happen to really, really like butter, so I'm going to be generous with this. All you do is just cut off little slices, just lay them right on top of the potatoes. Just like that. All right, let's do a couple more here. It's easier if you do this when the butter's cold too, so it holds together when you're slicing it. That looks good. We're also going to add a little bit of brown sugar to this. Brown sugar is also one of those ingredients that you can use as little or as much of. Um, when I said that these were ma maple mashed sweet potatoes, this is where the maple flavor comes from. Uh, the brown sugar has that nice, almost nutty flavor to it that I love. So you use some brown sugar. You just want to just take little handfuls and sprinkle it right on top. Just kind of crumble it a little bit. Just do a little bit more. That looks good. Now the oven is still on from when the sweet potatoes were baking, so all we're going to do is just slide this right back into the oven for just maybe five or ten minutes until everything melts. Okay, I'm going to check on my salsa one more time. That looks really, really good. This looks about done, actually. So the last thing we have to do is just add a little bit of chopped cilantro to make it a little bit brighter. And our pork looks about done as well. So let me just get that cilantro ready. So you just take a couple sprigs of cilantro, line up the stems on the end, and just quickly run your knife through there. Just a little rough chop is fine. You can even throw the stems in there as well because they are packed with flavor. Um, they tend to be a little bit woody though. 
so I usually leave them out. Just a little rough chop like that. We'll discard our stems here. Just run my knife through one more time. And that's about it. All right, let's slide this in. Just like that. And I'm actually gonna use some of the leftover rub that we had for the pork as well. Um, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of this into our salsa so it mirrors the flavor of the pork a little nicely. Just give that a nice hefty sprinkle. Like that. I'll toss that up one more time. You just want to make sure that the cilantro is really mixed in so that you get a little bit in every bite. Um, you don't really have to cook it down too much. That looks good. All right, you can turn the heat off on that. All right, I'm going to take one more quick break while the sweet potatoes finish in the oven. Just stick around, everything will come together in just a minute. Welcome back. Looks like everything's coming together pretty nicely. Everything looks about done. So the first thing I'm going to do is get our sweet potatoes out of the oven. Oh, those look good. Now your dish is going to be very, very hot, obviously. So just watch your fingers. Now remember, these are the sweet potatoes that we baked and then added butter and brown sugar to at the end. So I'm going to take our little spoon and just mix everything in. Those look good. All right, so everything's done. So I'm going to go ahead and start plating this. Um, I'm a big fan of the layered look, so I'm going to start first with a nice healthy scoop of our sweet potatoes. Right there on the bottom, a little bit more. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm feeding some hungry friends. Can't be too skimpy. I'll never hear the end of it. That looks good. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is get our salsa. Maybe I'll grab a pork chop, actually. These pork chops have been cooking for maybe about 10 or 15 minutes. They look really, really nice. They have the nice grill marks on there. I'm just going to lay one right on top of the sweet potatoes. And then we'll do one healthy scoop of this black bean and corn salsa that we made earlier. Just like that, right on top of the pork. It's not nice and colorful. To me, this dish just screams summer with the colors of fall. All right, and that's it. All right, so what we've got here are mashed maple sweet potatoes on the bottom. Those were made with those really, really healthy fresh sweet potatoes with a little bit of brown sugar and some butter. Our fresh lean cut pork chops that were dusted in that rub that we made with cumin, a little bit of chipotle pepper powder, some turmeric, which gives it that nice yellow color and our black bean and corn salsa, which we made with our fresh white corn on the cob, with black beans, cilantro, chipotle peppers and adobo sauce, a little bit of fresh green pepper and onion. And that's all we have for today. So my name is Kim Zakopla. If you've been watching Everyday Gourmet, stick around and see what we bring to you next week. Have a great day. This will be an everlasting love. This will be the one I've waited for This will be An everlasting love for me